Hello, amazing and wonderful black people out there. Shaquita Graham here, co-founder of MarriedWomensBiz.com and BlackTechLab.net. All right, now, more craziness going on in the Asian stores. And how does that relate to this awesome movie I just recently saw, Get Out? I'm going to talk about that and, and solutions to these problems that we continually face in the Black community. And I, I really wanted to bring this up in con, uh, comparison to the movie Get Out because this is like, in our community, we seem to be unaware of the realities that we face at times in this global system of racism, white supremacy. So basically, let me recap. In Charlotte, North Carolina, an Asian man by the name of Sung Ho Lim, owner of Misha Beauty, was filmed attacking a black woman that he accused of stealing. He kicked her, put her in a chokehold, and not without the help of his uh, wife or cousin or whoever the Asian lady was in the picture. Meanwhile, mind you, uh, I'm assuming there was probably a black female in the store as well that filmed the whole thing and nobody came to the aid of this woman who almost or uh, apparently looked like she could have been choked to death. And also keep in mind that this woman who was kicked and choked and all of this, there's no evidence that she stole anything. So now certain groups, uh, reportedly the NAACP, I've seen people say it was a nation of Islam, they're calling for an apology. And while on camera, the Asian man basically hesitated to even give an apology. And again, his his backup, his other Asian family members, whoever they were, said, well, it takes time to even come up with an apology. But my thing is, you know, who needs an apology from, from somebody who doesn't even see your life having as much value as a dog? Can you imagine if this man had to kick the dog like this, he would have been up under the jail. Look at somebody like a Michael Vick or like uh, the police officer who left a dog in the car and the dog died. He got put in jail. People who have killed our children in the street and been acqu acquitted for this. But we don't seem to understand the situation that we're in. So, um, you know, everybody's outraged. And for me, there's just a lot of issues with this scenario. And um, I'm really happy that the film Get Out was created because excuse me, it's a perfect metaphor for the situation that Black people find themselves in and how we react all too often. You know, and I don't think that I'll spoil the film because I knew everything about the film before I went to see it and I still enjoyed it. So, but there may be some spoilers. So here's the thing. Every day, all day, Black people just saunter and do cartwheels in and out of these institutions, filled to the brim and running over with suspected white supremacists and supporters of white supremacy that want to harm us. They want to harm us. They Okay, let me say, they, they, they want to torture us. They want to terrorize us. There is nothing that would give them more pleasure than to see us dying, being hurt, okay? But we go into these, these beauty supply stores, we go into these schools, these hospitals, these courts, these corporations, and we send our children in laughing, we go in there playing, we're spending our money, while these people don't value our lives as much as they value the life of a dog. <laughs> Literally, literally. And they have shown us this same, they have shown us this reality for hundreds of years. And many cases, like I said, they don't, they have, they take pleasure in seeing us harm. That's why they have the lynching parties. That's why they show black people being um, brutally harmed on uh, movies and things like this. That is why they, like to show the filming of black people being killed over and over again on camera. You don't see these kinds of things with white people or non-black um, or uh, other ethnicities. So again, I mean, it's, I hope I wouldn't have to just really make a case on that. You should see that by now. But 
Now compare this same behavior to the main character in the movie, Get Out. Now he was willing to invest his time, his love, his loyalty to a relationship with someone who he suspected could be or could be connected to white supremacist races. Yet without caution, he enthusiastically subjected his life to the terror that he knew could await him to some degree by going to this, uh, his white girlfriend's house, visiting them up in some location where he didn't even know where he was visiting her family. Now compare that with black people in these Asian stores and these schools and these restaurants. We don't need that hair. We don't need all that garbage that they sell. As a matter of fact, we owe it to ourselves to stop giving our money to these people. We are enriching people that we don't have to because I, I understand we're all in some way supporting the global system of racism and white supremacy, but where we don't have to, we need to stop. And for, um, for these Asians in our community who are so blatantly rude, rude abusive, and hateful towards us, uh, we have to stop giving them our money. The, um, the education system that we know is miseducating our children. We have to stop giving them our allegiance and where we can homeschool our own children or find institutions that are Afrocentric or whatever we have to do to get our children out of harm's way. We should be feeding our own communities healthy foods and responsible for feeding, um, you know, making sure that we supply our community with food. So again, this is one of these situations that is like, we are putting ourselves in harm's way when we owe it to ourselves to be doing for ourselves. So also similar to the movie Get Out, the groups who desire our oppression and destruction have us in a psychologically paralyzed state, similar to the main character in the movie, you know? Although, like, someone from the main character's community told him to be cautious of that situation and get out, he still opened himself up to the danger of um, danger and the mental slavery that awaited him there. So if we stop listening to the so-called mainstream and, and following their tactics and following um, their belief system, which is something that I wrote a whole book about called Stop Being Defined, we will be equipped to truly get out, you know? And I, I just want to share my screen for a minute because I want to show you the types of things that people who don't think you're human will do to you and why you, we should know better. Now, this man says that, this is an article that says, I didn't, I didn't think of Iraqis as humans, says a US soldier who raped a 14 year old girl before killing her and her family. This man said he didn't think of Iraqis as humans. This is the little, let me show you the little girl he raped. This is the little girl that he raped. What? If you didn't think of her as human, first of all, why would you want to have sex with her? But the, the second thing, look at this little girl. Why um, would you do something so brutal to this person? This is the kind of thing that people who don't think that you're human will do. Just like that Asian guy was just kicking this girl. I've, I've heard of stories where an Asian male or female was like kicking a pregnant black woman recently. I mean, we've seen all kinds of inhumane acts being waged against our people, yet we, again, we subject ourselves to the possibility of this by interacting with these people. And my thing is, if you're going to interact with them, then you should suspect that harm can come to you. You know, where, where is the mace? Where are the stun guns? Where are the weapons that we can use to defend ourselves in these situations as black women walking through the community? No, but we don't suspect anything. We send our young girls out here. We send our youth out here without anything to protect themselves against people who are constantly preying on us. On top of that, 
I, I found this this post. Uh, this is this post. This is a post where a woman was talking about all the money that she was spending in these Asian stores, and I can testify to have been. Uh, having been one of those patrons in the Asian store, the nail shops, but I got to the point that number one, I didn't want them people calling me ends in their own language and, and touching me. And I just didn't want people who hate me around me. I don't want that energy around me. And that's what happens when you start to really understand who you're dealing with. So she talks about in this post how she was giving Asians almost $4,000 a year that she was being pimped and smacked around and, and, and mistreated. And she said, feeling like you're more beautiful without these things is priceless. You know, again, you know, I wrote in, wrote about this in my book, Stop Being Defined. Because for a long time, even though my husband was telling me, I do not like all that weave. I like your natural hair. I don't want you having on a whole lot of makeup. You know, I like your natural beauty as a black woman. I like you looking like a black woman, <laughs> you know, and I had, I had to realize like what definition of beauty was I going by, you know, and I had to stop buying into those definitions and start taking care of my natural hair, my natural nails, my natural skin, you know, and, and that's, that's the thing that we're, we're falling for a lot of these ideas. And this is what uh, this woman was saying in this feeling like you're more beautiful without these things is priceless because you get out of that sunken place. If you saw the movie, get out, you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, being in, in a, a place where you're paralyzed and moving along with the system and what it says for you to do, the ideas of the, uh, the racist white supremacists. And, you know, it's a financial prison for us. Also, we owe it to ourselves to be concerned with building economic stability in our communities. And I found this information now, mind you, do your own research or whatever, but this, this Beauty Supply Institute right here, they, they help you get into business in the beauty supply business. And so let me show you this. They say they um, offer store opening help and all of these kinds of things. Not to say that everybody wants to go into the beauty supply business, but if you're already in a, a business that's similar to that, then you may um, you may want to. Let me see here. I thought this was a map showing which stores that they open. Let's see. I'm sorry. So they have here reviews about what they've done or whatnot. But these are the things that we need to keep in mind. And I personally would have nothing to say to this owner that treated this black woman so brutally. He should be up under the jail and have the same thing, if not much, much worse done to him would be justice because he had no right to mistreat this lady like this. And for us to even have any further conversation with this person is an indication of severely, severely low self-esteem, period. So we just need to get out, people. We need to straight up get out. And another part of that is building economic strength in our communities. And again, I have the a free black tech guide, blacktechguide.com, because I am a technologist and that is a great way to get yourself a, a good, nice, solid six figure income and get to the point where you can get out, get out of a lot of these institutions that you feel compelled to be a part of because you don't have the financial wherewithal to have your own business or set your own schedule and things like that. So you can get some information about that at black techguide.com. So I love you out there, people. Let's keep fighting for liberation. Let's stay away from our enemies and be suspicious of them. And let's defend ourselves against those who want to harm us and our children. Until the next video, thank you for watching.